Hello again, it's Priscilla Batzel in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery. Good morning. I've been playing with black and white, trying to do a ring pour, I think somewhat unsuccessfully. But in any case, I am going to start my seasonal attempt to play with black and white and gold and maybe silver by using that ring pour cup and sticking with my theme of white with things, but I'm going to use pearl instead of conventional white. I'll leave my top where I can find them. I'm going to change up my gold colors. So I have a couple different colors and that changes things up a little bit. I made some silver for myself. Actually, it looks more like gunmetal, so I'm going to skip it. Now I'm going to stick with the silver I do, I do have. And I'm going to keep using the pearl. <laughs> Lost for words. I don't think I need very much paint for this, to tell you the truth. And the problem is that I have, I'll have black and white coming out last. And very quickly, I want to... What do I want to do? I want to put gold on this, but I don't really think that it's the way to go. Because it won't cover. So I guess I'm going to give it a quick... Yeah, is that the right one? Yet? Yeah. I'm going to give it a quick once over to make paint slide with my ox... Really? Okay, fine. Whatever. My OXO omelet turning spatula that's available on my Amazon link directly below the video, which is lately directly below my Teespring link, which has some clothes and leggings and cool stuff on it. And it would be very good if I took the glasses from over here. I wish I would never take off, but I can't see. <laughs> Except for close up with them on, so... I can't really leave them on all the time. So schmutz aside, it's a really great paint spreader. And if you have a chance to get one, get the bigger one. It costs less money. We don't know why. And it works better. And always keep them clean. Use a, uh, I use a bucket of water to put my tools in so that the paint doesn't set up. And I dispose of the water in sand to filter the paint out. But uh, I always try my hardest to keep my spatulas clean. And I do have others, not that you'll see them. These are my Princeton Catalyst art, art tools, and I love them. They're, uh, they're awesome to swipe with. They're awesome to clean containers out with. I think I have enough paint, and if I don't, I think that won't be a problem because I'll be pouring something over here. Now, I've been pouring really small rings and many of them recently. So I think I'd kind of like to keep doing that. Kind of thinking that I would like before they completely merge to have some other paint in there. For drama sake, it may or may not stay. I keep thinking I'll do just one or two and tip those and then I get to this stage and I just want to put them all out there. And I'm going to put a little more gold. Get all the paint out of there. And I can probably squeegee it out with my Princeton Catalyst spatulas, and I maybe will do that. So you just run it around the inside, push it down. I don't ever mind having a center that's not perfectly ring poured. Matter of fact, I'll just start over right on top of that one and not worry about it. And while I'm here, ha ha, maybe I will see what happens. If I use a little, that's blocked. Goodbye blockage. And I really don't know what I'm going to do yet, except for that I will be tipping. So, easy enough. Let's just tip. It'll do what it wants to do. We could also torch first. I don't know what 
that is. It doesn't belong there. It looks like a bug. <laughs> we could torch first and see if we pop some cells. And once we have some cells, because of the because of the pouring medium, really, inside the mixture, we'll often make those cells happen with the chemical reaction. That's my assumption. I think I'm safe in that. So I still have some more paint over here, and it's bugging me. Because I don't like wasting paint. And I know that everything I tip over will just disappear anyway. So that's going in the bucket. And that just makes me want to do this. In a bunch of places. Ooh, I got some nice leopard print coming up. I'll let that merge and bring it back. I really like the black with the gold and the silver. I'm going to look for an edge catcher. Edge catchers are nothing more than plastic sheets or cardboard sheets or anything stiff enough to not fall into your painting while you're attempting to allow some paint to pool along an edge. Which I really like to do because as soon as I pool it, if I'm fast enough, I can tip it over and send it right back into the artwork. I'm going to recenter my paint. Somewhat. I'm going to have a look some more. I like that plain strip of gold. I like doing ring pours and adding adding paint from my squeeze bottles. Matter of fact, I can even I could even try and integrate that back in there. I don't know how that'll work because I haven't tried it before, but we shall see. I'm going to assume, since I've done a fair amount of tipping, that I can probably still keep some cool things happening. As long as I keep that edge catcher out of the painting. I like the stiff ones because they, they are a lot less inclined to get into the painting. Well, I'm really getting to a place where I just want to swipe that into position. But I have a lot of paint over here. And I still expect to tip that. And I'm going to rock the side of that edge catcher carefully. And throw that pattern right back in, hopefully. This over here is bugging me a little bit. There we go. Not sure what I'm doing. I'm not sure I like what I'm doing, I should say. But I haven't really got to a place where I've decided I'm anywhere near the design that I'm going to be using. It does occur to me that I have wanted to do something for a while. And that is make up a small ring pour cup assuming it will pour out and add it to the center of something. So that's what I'm going to do. Because I can. And because I want to. I'm going to try and add a few ribbon pours. That's kind of cool. I like it. I want a bigger and better edge catcher. It's way too big though, the one that I found. I should have used the torch on that just to see what would happen. I'm not sure my placement was all perfect, but I am going to let everything go. 
down to this side where there isn't anything happening. Try and manipulate my paint to do what I want it to do by pooling it yet again and rocking it and throwing it right back and around and back. And then there's the idea of how many times can I add a new ring and continue to tip. And what do I want to do? I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to take the paint that's on my edge catcher. Where is it? It's over here. Whoa, no, 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 no. <laughs> that was close. Be careful with your edge catcher. It can be rather slippery. So I'm going to try and remove a little more paint over here. But you know what? I don't mind that right now. at all. It's, I've left it alone and it's doing its own thing and I like the thing it's doing. So that just makes me want to continue over here with some white pearl. I'm going to knock off what's on my spatula and wipe off the rest on the edge and throw it into a bucket. Let that white pearl and that black from my spatula mix. Use my finger with a paint that's dripped over the edge. I'm just gonna, I'm shuffling, I'm shuffling the basting brush for texture. <laughs> that's an odd term that I didn't expect to use with a brush of any kind. But um, I'm okay with it. I kind of think I need it over here too, though. Just to sort of draw the eye around. And while we're at it, why don't we just keep going? The silver didn't come out too obnoxiously. That black is awesome. So, yet again, another primary example of not a ring pour by me. <laughs> I'm going to wipe off that basting brush, mostly. And that's okay. I don't know about that. That's not okay. Just a little something something blend it in a little bit. We got some neat stuff happening. I don't mind. You can drag your skewer and create all kinds of patterns that look completely natural. I just, oh, you know what? I just really like this. Cool. I especially don't mind my, uh, my additional ring in the center. It's not hurting my feelings a bit. I've got a bunch of uh, uncovered edges, and what I usually do is finish them after you're gone. I've got four minutes left on my timer. I set a timer because my camera shuts off in 20 minutes. I set my timer for 18 so that um, I have a couple of minutes to tell you what I need to tell you. And maybe one day I'll remember all of it in one string, but I don't really like the idea of boring the heck out of you. So I'll say that I do sell my artworks. They are for sale. They are mostly shown at the bottom of the description underneath the video in Volume 1 and Volume 2 on a Facebook album. But bear in mind that on the title of every single video with an artwork, there is a file number near the date at the end. And if you ever want something that's not listed, pretty much everything is available, and all you need to do is ask. Just talk to me, and we'll figure it out. I do give lessons at the house. The gallery has literally a thousand paintings in it. Not all mine. My parents, I inherited 400 from them. And uh, I have various things that they collected as well. And uh, it's a small house, so pretty much everything is for sale. Even things that, things that might turn out someday to be extremely collectible. You never know. Uh, I have Teespring, which is a clothing line that shows directly below the video. 
and I've been making some leggings and some t-shirts and using my favorite studio art and uh, I hope you shop there. If you shop my Amazon link you can find that OXO omelet turning spatula by the big one. It's cheaper. Ooh, that has paint on it. Oh well, fortunately it's silicone and with a little bit of work I can get that off of there. Um, also you can find the Princeton Art Tool Catalyst Spatulas. Princeton Catalyst Art Tool Spatulas. Any arrangement of those words will probably get you someplace on a search. Anyway, I love the drama in this. This is really cool. I want to say thank you to all my contributors. Thank you so much. And if I can break even, I'm going to continue to run a contest where the winner will get to choose one of three paintings. And that is still running as I make this artwork, but I'm not sure that that will be the case when you see the video. So we'll see how long it takes me. The contest is over uh, December 5th at midnight and announced the winner December 8th sometime during the day. And I'll try and get in touch with whoever wins before that and make sure that it's cool with them to say their name and maybe just a first name will be good enough. So my paint pouring recipe is in the video. My fingers are my favorite tools, <laughs> no matter what I say. And uh, this is all good. I really like all of this. This has balance. It has intrigue. It's compelling. I like it very, very much. And uh, I use the torch, by the way, maybe one more time, to get rid of the bubbles in the paint from mixing the paint with a pouring medium. And also, if you can see them, there's a bazillion little tiny cells forming as the paints react with each other. And that's a beauty. I'm so ha happy you guys joined me, all 37,000 plus of you, and uh, please give me a thumbs up. I'm asking very nicely, please give me a thumbs up because it will show this video, or all of my videos, probably to more people in the feed on, in, on YouTube. I don't have any other income except for YouTube, so I appreciate all of your help and all of your contributions very, very much. So you guys, I love you. Keep making comments. Um, if I forgot anything, look at a different video because I say it in all of them. Oh my god. Anyway, I did say I love you. <laughs> and I do. So I will see you soon. Probably in the next video. And if not, sometime after that. There are, oh yes, there are 340 videos by this time. I'm sure. If you like what I do, you should check out some others. Um, I'll see you soon. Priscilla out. Bye for now.